Communism is a word that you hear thrown around a lot these days, but do we really understand what it is? Communism, like all forms of political thought, is often romanticized. While the image of Che Guevara emblazoned across a t-shirt is fashionable, it is part of a political past that stands in direct opposition to many of the foundations of the United States. The idea of communism can sound attractive and fascinating. After all, it is based upon the idea of the working class, or proletariat, rising up against those who own production in a capitalist society, or the bourgeoisie, and establishing a society where there is no private property and the ability to produce belongs to the entire community. In this modern-day utopia, there would be equality of condition, a socialist economy where the government provided everything necessary for its people. Or as Karl Marx, the father of communism, stated, quote, from each according to his ability, to each according to his needs, end quote. In this utopia, the needs of society would be placed above individual needs. It sounds great, doesn't it? We all work as hard as we are able and are given what we need. But is this really what communism looks like? Communism grew out of the ideals of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, which they expressed in the Communist Manifesto in 1848. They hoped to end capitalism because they believed it exploited workers. Marxism is based on a class struggle where the working class would grow a sense of class consciousness. This greater awareness would lead to class conflict, which would then be resolved through revolution. Not only would they rise up and seize power, but they would also remake the politics, economies, and cultures of the world. Because the proletariat had been suppressed under capitalism, Marx would say they would be motivated to change society using their industrial training to carry out this task. They would suppress any resistance and politics would cease to exist. In the image of Niccolo Machiavelli, Marx and Engels rejected morality as a principle for action. The ultimate goal was the establishment of a communist society worldwide. When we teach of communism today, it is more than the ideas of Marx and Engels. We now have a century of examples to tell us what communism looks like when it is played out in real life. The first successful communist takeover took place in Russia in October 1917 when Vladimir Lenin seized power through the Bolshevik Revolution. The newly established communist government then seized land from the former gentry, the church, and those in the royal family. Banks, the largest factories, and mines were also seized with no reimbursement. Lenin issued a decree where he could close down any newspaper hostile to him or his administration. A security force was set up to crush any resistance, and enemies were eliminated. This would be the path taken by future communist regimes. Once they seized power, they would establish an authoritarian dictatorship where the economy was run by the state and the state's will was enforced by violence through a security police force. This security force terrorized the people and suppressed human rights. The fall of Russia to communism was only the beginning. In all parts of the world throughout much of the 20th century, we saw other nations fall to communism. This trend really took off after World War II. As one of the Allies, Russia pushed the Nazi army back through Eastern Europe. Once the Nazi forces were pushed out of a country, the Soviets would then occupy that territory. When Nazi Germany was defeated, the Soviet Union did not relinquish control of these countries. Instead, they created communist regimes that ultimately submitted to the authority of the Soviet Union. After the war, Germany and its capital city of Berlin were divided between the Allied nations, making the eastern portion of the country and capital city communist. Korea, after being freed from Japanese control, was also divided, with the North a communist country and the South free and democratic. Later that decade, we would see China fall to communism, then Cuba, Vietnam, and other nations in Asia, Europe, Africa, and South America. Marx and Engels had predicted that there would be a withering away of the state once a proletariat revolution took place. Instead, what the history of communism has shown us is that the state power always increased significantly, resulting in suppression of those who did not support the communist regime. It turns out that the founders of the United States were correct in their belief that humans are inherently selfish and corruptible. 
This led to those who had seized power holding on to it tightly. The key elements that we see in all communist governments is totalitarian control of the economy, communication, and information centers, a national identity based on class, obsession over the existence of an enemy whose presence supposedly prevented the appearance of an ideological utopia, and all power is relegated to a dangerous and ambitious dictator. There is one characteristic that stands out above the rest, and that is violence. Death tolls. Soviet Union, 20 million. China, 65 million. Vietnam, 1 million. North Korea, 2 million. Cambodia, 2 million. Eastern Europe, 1 million. Latin America, 150,000. Africa, 1.7 million. Afghanistan, 1.5 million. More people have died for this idea of a socialist utopia than any other political ideology. But they didn't die trying to achieve it. They died at the hands of it.